I just traveled to another dimension. That's what I texted with wonder to my brother Mark after an eye-opening experience I had five years ago. I remember it vividly. I'm standing on a platform that's just traveled deep into the earth before entering into some giant alien ship. Inside, my hand is transformed into this object of power that I used to open up a mind-bending portal and travel to a new world. And then I take the headset off, and I've been standing in my basement the whole time. I remember that miraculous moment like a real experience, but it happened in virtual reality. I want to introduce you to the idea that VR isn't just a way of simulating things. It's a tool to adapt our thinking, to not just think outside the box, but to take the box and blow it up. VR is by no means new. My brother and I used to be enthralled with the possibilities of the technology back in the 90s. Mark had tried a VR arcade experience at a theme park, and we were hooked. We used to imagine all the things that an immersive simulation technology could enable, wild visions of creativity that were infused with excitement in the way that seems only easy to come by as a child. I still remember that feeling of yearning, excitement, and impatience. That future, one where our experiences were unbounded, just couldn't come fast enough. Now we seem on the brink of that future. I grew up immersed in the real world with all its demands and constraints, learning new skills and adapting my thinking to the realities of life. Now I find myself starting a career around VR, thinking about and developing new spaces to solve interesting problems. And after some decades, I'm reconnected with that childlike creativity and passion. And that's the perspective that I want to share with you today. VR isn't just a newly available way of playing video games, or a way of training employees, or a way to visit historical sites. It's all of those things, of course. But at its core, it's a medium in which we can experience the things we imagine, to create and explore new worlds, to connect our competent adult minds with our childlike creativity and enthusiasm. After trying an early medical VR prototype, a thoughtful colleague of mine, the late Dr. Epin, remarked, if we could have done it this way from the start, we never would have done it any differently. That remark stuck with me for years, because it made me think. When we innovate, our starting point is always the way things were always done. What resulted from the natural progression of things constrained by the limitations of the real world? But what if we don't start there? What if we jump into some dram brand new place and start there? Shortly after getting my first VR system, I gave my dad a demo. He was on a mountain vista, and he could travel to different vantage points. I brought him to the edge of a cliff, and then he asked me what would happen if he stepped forwards. I said, try it. But he wouldn't. No, no, seriously, there's floor in front of you. You're, you'll be fine. No matter how much I tried to convince him that he was standing in my house, which he knew full well, he just couldn't bring himself to step off the edge of that cliff. That's how real and visceral VR can feel and how it can transport us away from the real world. But VR doesn't just remove the experience of the real world. It removes the limitations of the real world. If you could create a world without physical limitations, what valuable solutions could you find? We set out to explore that space at the Ottawa Hospital, asking the question, in a world where the imagined can become real, what does it look like to give doctors x-ray vision? And how would that work? Here's an early experiment of ours. We called it the x-ray flashlight. In this experience, a user can manipulate the CT and MRI of a patient such that they can shine a flashlight to see past the skull and into the brain. Ultimately, it wasn't a clinically useful mechanism, but using that virtual tool felt like magic. The exciting thing was that the time from idea to experience was very short, a couple days. And in the end, we'd invented something that simply couldn't exist in the real world. Ultimately, this demo still played a valuable role. We would show it to physicians who were interested in using VR as a way to spark their imaginations, show them something completely new, let them live it, and then watch as they start exploring that place of possibilities with their own ideas. Have you ever witnessed the moment that someone's mind is blown? Here's a demo of a doctor trying VR for the first time, using a, a demo that we made for a conference a few years ago. So he grabs a human heart, 
and he stretches it so large that he can stand inside of it. Once inside, he spots his colleague who's in there with him, and he starts to laugh in wonder at the experience. When was the last time you laughed in genuine wonder? Probably as a child, back when the world would present you something completely new, completely unexpected, and you were enthralled. But we're not children anymore. We're adults who have jobs and challenges and goals, which is why the astonishment doesn't stop there. One exciting phenomenon I've noticed after helping hundreds of doctors try VR for the first time is that almost universally they transition from being astonished to being contemplative and imaginative. We could use this to teach medical students. I wonder if this would help me plan a pelvic reconstruction. Could I connect with a remote colleague? If we could have done it this way from the start, we never would have done it any differently. Wonder, imaginativeness, and then what next? The real value of VR is that it lets you learn from your imagination because it lets you experience what you imagine. Like two doctors that were in a networked VR demo, what surprised me about these two was that it was their first time trying VR, and like most, I assumed that they would simply explore the environment. But what ended up happening was that the thoracic surgeon started immediately teaching his nuclear medicine colleague about the vessels of the lung and his challenges during surgery. All of these phenomena, the ability to achieve something impossible in minimal time, the reconnection with childlike wonder, the sparking of unbounded imagination decoupled from real world constraints, the natural contemplation about potential solution, and the unprompted engagement in unexpected ways, they've convinced me that VR has massive potential for creativity and adaption. Our early experiments led us to another question. What if we reimagined the way that we interact with 3D medical images like CTs and MRIs? Departing from our preconceptions and moving away from the conventional viewing of 2D slices on a screen, what would that look like? On top of that, physicians often mark up images for various purposes. In the case of planning radiation therapy treatment for cancer or medical 3D printing for surgical planning, it's to create detailed 3D structures of organs like the heart and the spinal cord. What would that look like reimagined? The end result is that we took a process that looks like this and turned it into this. For decades, we've been interacting with 3D medical images like disembodied 2D slices. But it turns out that VR affords us a much better environment for quickly turning medical images into useful and interactable 3D medical content. Picture waving your hand and a kidney appears in front of you from a patient's image. And then having a colleague from across the country or the world appear beside you to discuss that case. That's possible now. But we never would have discovered that world if we hadn't adapted our thinking to exploring that space of unknown creative solutions. The exciting thing is that platform is now a vehicle to explore the imaginations of doctors who use it, which is why it's being used by cardiologists to present difficult heart surgery cases to their surgical colleagues, or to visualize and communicate brain tumors, or even for a biology course in Utah where students can learn the anatomy of reptiles and birds while standing inside of the rib cage of an animal they just created. I promise there are meaningful experiences to be had in the exploration of your imagination or that of others. My 97-year-old grandmother can back me up on that. She tried VR a few years ago and experienced being underwater on a sunken ship and coming within arm's reach of a giant whale. When the headset came off, that moment, of having reconnected with wonder and possibility had brought her to tears. How many more things could we do the way that they should have been done all along if we didn't start our exploration from our limitations, but from somewhere completely new? If we all reconnected with our childlike wonder and supercharged our imaginations, and if we all took a break from the real world and its many constraints and explored new worlds without boundaries, if you've never tried VR, then find someone who has a headset or go buy your own. Go have an experience that blows your mind. You might find that you've gained a new perspective or connected with something wonderful. Thank you.